Hi Brawlers and welcome to my review of episode 48 of Armored Alliance, I'm Haru Ren. So spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Armored Alliance episode 48. The first part is Tico's back? Wait, what? Havoc is watching old clips from Tico's rampage from last season wanting to add Tico to Sabra. What is it about battling? I don't know, the inside of my chest just gets strangely hot. Is what I've never felt such a sensation before. Wow, are we actually getting genuine character development from Havoc? This really seems like Havoc is warming up too and genuinely seems like he's enjoying Bakugan. Maybe this is the first sign to Havoc possibly changing and embracing Bakugan and being human? I don't know, this just is, that, that, this is just my interpretation. Bakugan, it's Trux! You can't even tell your own partner? Then take off his blindfold too fast. Havoc discovers where Tico is sleeping, Goreen asks the awesome brawlers for help, and Pyravian, Nobilius, Trino, and Serpentis are trying to protect Tico, but they're no match for Sabra. Holy crud, Sabra is even more powerful than four Golden Bakugan, thinking about that. Awaken Tico! I seriously still need a Tico toy. But the awesome brothers arrive to try and help Tico, but oh wow, Tico can't fuse with Sabra because Tico had genuinely changed. So he is not compatible with Sabra at all. This to me really is very cool to see Tico again, but to genuinely see that Tico has fully become better. That is a problem. I'll take hold of you by force. Can you really do that? It's already proven you can't fuse. So what are you planning to do? Rip Tico apart and put the pieces on Sabra? You know, I kind of wish that Tico and Sabra did fuse, that way we could finally get a Tico toy. The Awesome Brothers fuse with the Oralist Bakugan and a fight ensues. How funny is it that Tico and Sophie are in the same episode together, considering Sophie is actually pretty much the human version of the old Tico? When the Awesome Brothers successfully repel Sabra, Ebony comes out of nowhere. I'm genuinely surprised there's no shock from the Awesome Brothers wondering who Ebony is. Have they even at all met or knew about her before this? Maxator X Zentar goes and attacks Psych Pyravian. Havoc takes Pyravian to use for Sabra instead, and they get away. Please help Pyravian take care of the Bakugan and our future. Awesome brawlers. Why does the dialogue here sound like Tico is dying? We continue with Arise Ultimate Infinity, where Havoc is getting Pyrevian to fuse with Sabra while the Awesome Brothers are looking for him. They find the tower where Team Havoc is waiting in ambush style. I was expecting the fighting here to be a little bit more dramatic and action-y, but whatever. But it's too late, Sabra has become Sabra X Pyravian, even though in real life the Bakugan is very underwhelming. And now there we go, the dramatic overpowerment of the villain's big bad boss Bakugan on the other Awesome Brawlers. Even Ajit has a fearful moment that was actually kind of shown in the previous episode, but ultimately led to nothing. When the Awesome Brothers are shaking in fear thinking they will lose, we get the best voice acting from each of the Awesome Brothers Bakugan. No matter how powerful the opponent, he has never given up. He is Dan Kuzo, my partner, the ultimate partner. For me, the ultimate partner is Leah. Shun never loses his cool. He always finds a way to pull through. Winton's unique mind can turn any problem into an opportunity for victory. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Don't underestimate lightning. Noble, loyal, and fierce is Ajit. It is why I battle without fear or worry. I gotta give it to Jason Dillian and Scott Law, the voices of Drago and Hydras the most. Though all of them read their lines beautifully, there was just something in terms of deep connection that comes from Jason and Scott. Though, by a very small margin. All of them were fantastic. This makes a multicolor fusion core appear. STOP RIGHT THERE! Okay, why is Storm the only one actually trying to stop them? Why is he the only one that actually does something? They do an ultimate faction fusion, which is... Actually, just a part of the Dragonoid Infinity toy that puts all the fusion toys onto it, creating Ultimate Infinity. Though, it's just Dragonoid Infinity with rainbow colors. It's practically Dragonoid with the Infinity Gauntlet. 
Now, I do like the stark contrast to the two ultimate Bakugans in this episode. While Havoc's Sabra X Pyradion he considers an ultimate Bakugan, it was created artificially, meaning it's a fake power. While Dragonoid Ultimate Infinity was created naturally with the bonds of others gaining power from friends. And I think deep down, Havoc knows that too, which explains his shock to Drago being equal to Sabra. Drago one-shots the other fusion Bakugan. Here's a little payback for earlier! God, you seriously can't tell me Jason Deleen isn't awesome? He was born to be Drago. Here's a little payback for earlier! Impressive! Ah, you knew that was coming. Carry on. I finally understand it. Dan Kuzo, I see why you find yourself drawn to Bakugan battling. So Havoc here finally knows the true meaning of Bakugan battles, finally coming to terms with his own status as a Bakugan brawler. I really like to think that this is him really learning what the real strengths humans actually have and the strength from Bakugan. Considering Havoc disguises himself as a human all the time, he seems to be gaining very human-like qualities, and you know what, that could be an intriguing thing about his character. Maybe that's what his entire run as a villain has been about all along? So, Havoc escapes, hyping up the final showdown, and the episode ends with the tower disappearing again. He said something about a fitting stage, but what does that mean? There's no use worrying about that! Um, no, you should definitely be worried. Like, literally panicking. So that was Armored Alliance episode 48, let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was an alright episode that was full of thrilling action, further development to the story nearing the end, Sabra X Pyravian finally appears, and we got more Infinity and even Tico coming back! I really do like the humanizing of Havoc, though he is an alien and no matter how many times he tries to deny it, he does seem like he's becoming more and more human with his character. You know, I think maybe that's what the last episode tried to do, and also, remember when his plan failed at the Tokyo Battle League? It was the first time he said he was upset. Now he's learning the full concept and feeling of being a Bakugan brawler and the connection to Bakugan humans can have. I think it's pretty interesting and that's how I see it. Maybe it wasn't intended to be that way, but hey, even artistry can sometimes happen accidentally. The action was pretty good, though it was kinda all over the place, and we got even more hype towards the final battle, which I have to assume is Havoc's fitting stage as he mentioned. I can't wait to see it and I hope it's better than the last season. So this episode gets a Baku good. Thank you for watching this review of Armored Alliance. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye.